squeeze the bulb all the way in all the way in and then okay. to kind of catch the skin right and then okay. hold it tight and then glide all right Hi and welcome to The Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to learn about aging well and to bring you the very best advice on looking and feeling good for longer. Now, I like to bring you the latest innovations and in thinking around anti-aging skincare and longevity. And today I'm talking to someone who used her engineering background to develop a new technique of fermenting oils to boost their effectiveness in treating dry, dehydrated and aging skin. To that, she's added a simple little facial cupping tool to boost lymphatic drainage, and she's created a range that supports blood and cell circulation, and that's where the inspiration for her business name came from. It is CircCell, and I had the pleasure of talking with founder Maya Crothers, who carried out a lot of research into how we can best support our aging skin. And in the description, I've included some links to the research she references in our discussion, along with a link to the CircCell site and a discount code, so you can check that out below. On this channel, I interview doctors, scientists, specialists, and skincare founders who bring us unique expertise and insight around skincare and longevity. And I wanna take the opportunity as well to say they do not pay me to appear. These interviews are not sponsored and I select interviewees on merit based on the specialist knowledge they can bring us. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by giving my videos a thumbs up and by subscribing so you don't miss future videos. And a big thanks to all those who have already subscribed or are doing so as I speak, it's much appreciated. So now let's hear from Maya on why this engineer became an accidental skincare entrepreneur. Maya, it's lovely to meet you. Um, where am I speaking to you today? Where, where are you calling from? So nice to meet you as well. Uh, I'm in Aspen, Colorado. Oh, wow. I mean, that's the place to be in winter. What's it like in summer? It's just beautiful. I mean, truly every day is a gift and there's mm -hmm. lots of hiking and bike riding and paddle boarding. And it's just, it's, it's literally a playground for grownups because it's, it's an, you know, sort of an outdoor heaven. Um, yeah. So um, while in the winter time, you're really only getting people who ski in the summer, you're, it's just a wider demographic of people. Because you've got a really interesting backstory. Um, it's not the traditional route into skincare. You're not a, a dermatologist, or, but you, um, you do have an interesting professional background, which I'm sure sort of leans into this. So tell us what you were doing before you got into skincare. So I, I, I'm an engineer. Um, and I worked in industries that are um, traditionally male. I worked in the energy business, um, went back to school, got an MBA, started consulting, did a lot of, again, not sort of female traditional um, industries, auto automotive, computer networking. Um, but I've always been a skincare junkie. And um, it's sort of been a hobby of mine you know, since I was a very, very young woman, always took very good care of my skin. Um, I retired somewhat young, moved to the small mountain town of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, uh, when my kids started preschool and really never thought that I would have an act two. I kind of like to call mm -hmm. myself the accidental entrepreneur. <laughs> um, so, I mean, there I was in this beautiful town, um, with some idle time that, you know, I'd never been, I'd always been this person who was this overachiever and, um, and, you know, loving life in this small mountain town and it was wonderful, but it destroyed my skin. So I don't know how much your viewers know about Jackson hole, but it's at very high altitude. It's a mountain town. It's a ski town. Um, the, uh, climate is very, very dry desert dry. We're outside all the time for eight or nine hours at a time, skiing, hiking. And I could not find anything that could manage that type of environment for my skin. Mm. And so it kind of sent me on a journey, you know, someone who'd always been involved um, in skincare as a hobby and who could think about it from a scientific perspective, right? As a trained engineer, I, you know, would 
investigate ingredients and I would look up white papers on the ingredients, you know, mm-hmm. like I really learned a lot about skincare, but all, you know, but never really thought that it would be um, a career choice for me. So what started off as kind of a search to figure out how to have beautiful skin in this extreme environment um, turned into a bit of a hobby, turned into a product. And then I kind of woke up one day and had this company. Um, wow. It didn't really, without really having planned it. So you were experiencing a lot of um, skin dryness, basically, was yeah. the major complaint. And um, what ingredients did you focus on within that first product that you designed? So really what I tried to find, it, it was dryness and then all the things that happen when your skin starts to break down because it has an issue, right? So dryness can lead and lead to all sorts of other things. Your skin can look not as firm and you start to see more wrinkles and, you know, you sort of start to see this general breakdown. And, um, and so I wanted to find ingredients that were powerful enough to stand up to this environment, kind of keep your skin looking healthy and beautiful, but didn't necessarily feel like a straight jacket on my skin, right? Like some Mm -hmm. of the things I was doing just, just for my skin to feel relief as I was going to, I was using like aquaphor or that, you know, like petroleum jelly. I was putting it on my, I would go to my pantry and pour olive oil in my hand and put that on my skin. (laughs) I thought, well, surely there has to be something a little more scientific, a little more elegant. And so um, it's a hard question to answer, to just talk about one particular ingredient. So there are lots of interesting, innovative ingredients we use to help the skin. So there are three ways to hydrate your skin. Mm -hmm. You can push moisture into the skin from the external environment. You can, and that would be using a class of ingredient called humectants. You can maintain the moisture in your skin, and that would be using a class of ingredients called occlusives. And then you could hydrate internally through drinking water and, and your diet, right? So what we do, I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're dealing only with topicals. So we bring a variety of humectants and occlusives um, to all of our formulations. And then with that, we also use a lot of anti-inflammatories. The, the majority of the women that use our products will say, and I would imagine a, a lot of women, because I know your demographic, it's, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, it's women who are at the point where they really start have to thinking about performance in their skincare. Absolutely. Right? And a large majority of those women will say that their skin is both dry and somewhat sensitive. Really what you're feeling is inflammation. Whatever is irritating your skin is causing inflammation and inflammation also causes dryness. It causes rashes. It causes flakiness. So we also include anti-inflammatories along with humectants and occlusives because you want to soothe the skin. So really it's more than just finding one moisturizer, right? And then even on the, even in the world of humectants, there are many different types of humectants at different molecular sizes, because depending on the molecular size of the humectant, it it will penetrate more deeply. And there are different layers of the dermis and you want to hydrate them all. And so Mm -hmm. in some cases you want to really, you know, you want different molecular sizes. So you're hydrating throughout the entire dermis. And so we really try to look at this situation that at least the dryness issue um, holistically. And, you know, we're not just, we're not just throwing in, one ingredient we're throwing in several we're also looking at um um, inflammation and we're trying to tackle it that way and can you give me some examples of your favorite humectants favorite occlusives within those products and the favorite anti-inflammatories the ones that are repeating throughout the range so one of my favorite and there are a lot of humectants and they're all good Mm. and we use a lot of them so i'm not saying this is the only one that you should use but one of one of my favorites is salperine 8 salperine 8 is a natural ingredient it's sourced from succulents do you you know anything about gardening succulents are and you got if anyone who's watching google succulents my husband edits these videos and his ears will have pricked up now as he's doing the work perfect perfect um so succulents are these almost impossibly green they're almost comically green when you see them you're like is that a real plant or is that a fake plant beautiful plants that grow in the driest corners of the planet so literally they grow in the desert where there's very very little moisture and the reason they stay green um is because of this innate substance they have salperine 8 and what salperine 8 
is so good at is pulling whatever tiny amount of moisture out of the air and driving it into the plant. So it's one of the most powerful humectants and it's clean and natural. Mm -hmm. Um, So, so that's my favorite humectant. As far as occlusives are concerned, again, we look to naturals and we're not a purely natural line. We use um, a lot of professional grade ingredients as well, Mm -hmm. but you find that in many cases, natural ingredients perform better than, you know, something that you could synthesize, um, something that you can synthesize in a lab, but for occlusives, um, I love shea butter. I love essential oils. So, um, and, and, um, in some cases, the oils that we use will ferment the oil and it's a natural, um, clean fermentation process, no harmful byproducts, and it changes the oil on a molecular level so that it's more supportive to the cellular membrane. The cellular membrane um, is is important for circulation of the cell. Um, And so this fermentation process does um, two or three things that are really, really important. So they're essential oils, they're natural, but we use this natural process to sort of supercharge them. And then in terms of anti-inflammatories, we use so many. Um, again, they tend to be more natural. Lavender, chamomile, we, one of my favorites is gargonian extract. It's a marine source, so from the, from the ocean, um, anti-inflammatory, and it's just remarkable in topically um, soothing the skin. And then, you know, and then we also have to talk about antioxidants as well. And the, you know, the, the nice thing about the natural ingredients is that they tend to do double duty as antioxidants as well. Well, I'll tell you what, firstly, when you mentioned about um, uh, the cell circularity there, is there some significance to the to the name of the of your business, yeah. Cirque Cell? Cirque Cell is a hybrid of circle and cellular. So circle denoting whole and balanced, right? So we believe in the power um, of naturals and we don't want to do harm to the universe and we don't want to do harm to our bodies. Um, so that's the circ part of circ cell. And then the cell part cellular, um, is really denoting kind of the scientific part as well. So I'm an engineer, I believe in science. Um, so we, um, you know, so we also believe in finding really powerful scientific ingredients, the types that you would find in a doctor's brand and we combine them both and we deliver them in a very clean and natural way. Um, There's a bit of a double entendre because the, um, uh, because the circ part in circle also in a sense um, stands for circulation. So we believe that circulation, healthy circulation, healthy blood, blood flow, healthy lymphatic drainage is also the key to healthy, beautiful skin as well. Yeah, it makes sense. And I mean, a lot of these ingredients actually are ones I'm not hugely familiar with. And I hear, you know, I speak to a lot of people and hear about a lot of different ingredients. I mean, how much digging, how much research are we talking about that you were doing to... A lot, a yeah. lot. <laughs> it sounds like... Yeah, you know, we don't launch new products. We're a small line. We're tightly edited. Um, you know, we don't launch products constantly, you know, typically I have to be inspired by an ingredient or a need. Um, you know, we don't do things just to do them. And so I take my time, um, in, you know, in finding good technologies, um, and, and launching products. And we also work with world-class formulators. So, um, you know, we, we work with formulators that have formulated for all the big brands that, you know, and for a lot of the doctor's brands and, you know, typically, uh, um, a line of our size um, won't work with um, formulators of that caliber because they're really expensive. Um, yeah, but we do. So it's really it's a combination of my own research um, and just working with really really good chemists. I'm always amazed by um, how many new skincare brands are emerging because it seems like such a saturated market. I mean, if you just think of the millions of products that are av- available to consumers. Very overwhelming for a lot of consumers, but it's good. It's always good to see the innovation. I just wonder how it feels to be, you know, starting a skincare brand from scratch, trying to differentiate yourself in a saturated market. How does that pan out in practice? And if you don't mind me asking, 
I mean, how much of your own, um, you know, how much risk was there for you in really you must have had to invest in this quite heavily to get it off the ground? Well, you know, I, again, I'm, I, I sort of am this accidental entrepreneur, you know, mm. I didn't start out thinking, okay, well, I'm going to launch this line and I need 17 products. And mm. I mean, it started off with one product and then, you know, maybe a year later we launched another product and, um, and really it's been kind of homegrown and I, you know, we don't have a lot of, um, and the investors that we do have are minority investors. I mean, I'm, I sort of am the majority shareholder, so I don't have a lot of pressure to grow very quickly. Um, mm-hmm. and so I'm, I'm, I'm able to sort of manage it. Yeah. Um, now that's not to say that, you know, it doesn't require investment and time and energy and effort, but, you know, I didn't really, you know, I sort of have done this my, my own way. Yeah. Um, in a way that makes sense for me, in a way that I can manage. And how have you been able to differentiate yourself? I mean, how do you get the message out there? And, you know, what's what's been behind the growth, do you think? Yeah, well, I think it's a lot of word of mouth. You know, we um, also have some pretty well-heeled partners like Neiman Marcus. Mm -hmm. And so we did a lot of in-store events. Um, We're also a professional brand. We're in spas. Um, you know, it's just, I mean, it's really kind of like any other business. You just sort of build it one customer at a time. And of course we use the digital space as well. And we work with a lot of influencers. So, I mean, I think the the way we're getting our message out is not so different from the way other brands get their message out. We are just targeted to a very specific demographic. And I think what we're trying to do and the way we're trying to do resonates with that woman who's probably in her forties or over or um, again, she's really looking for primarily performance. She is sophisticated and educated when it comes to skincare. So when I, when, you know, when someone says the word humectant, she knows what that means. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Talk about vitamin C. She understands it has to be mm-hmm. stable. That's my viewers. <laughs> right. Like they're just savvy. And I think yeah. our message and the way we do things, it just all resonates with them yeah. because, because they are sort of an educated consumer. One of the really interesting products that you do is um, the facial cupping treatment. And um, I did chuckle because I have a a journalist colleague who recently did um, a cupping review on his back. You know, he he was having back problems. He went for candy. (laughs) When he came back to the newsroom, I mean, I'll share the, the pictures within this video. His back was covered in the most enormous welts. I mean, it looked painful. He said it wasn't that painful, but they they hung around for a long time. So that's always what we associate with with cupping treatments is that it's going to leave you with marks. And so when I saw facial cupping, I thought, well, that's interesting. Obviously, the, I'm guessing that the design is not about leaving, you know, no, marks. no. And, Tell me a little bit about it and, um, and and why that's part of your range. So again, we really believe that circulation is the path to beauty. And in fact, it's the circulation, it's the path to health in general. Mm. As we age, our circulation slows down and that causes disease and it causes aging skin cells um, that lead to wrinkles, sagging. And so anything that you can do to help support your skin's circulatory system is really supportive. And it's getting the blood flow to the skin, isn't it? It's getting oxygen and blood flowing into our skin cells. Yeah. And it's really two types of circulation that you're going to get through facial cupping. And I'm going to show you what our cupping tools. I've got mine because I want to do this with you. Um, I gave it a go the other day and I don't, I just don't think I got the technique right. And I was a little bit scared that was going to leave marks. I thought I'm going to wait until Maya can talk me through this. So the reason he, he, um, had marks left on his skin is because they applied the cups, right? You get the suction yeah. and they left it there. And if you just yeah. leave it there like that for five or 10 minutes, what that's doing is it's really, it is, it's drawing the blood to the surface of the skin or to that area, whatever it is you're trying to treat, whether it's a sore muscle or whatever it is. And so that's going to leave a red mark. Okay. Fate, that's not the way you cup your skin. Now you can yeah. do that, but you will, you will get red marks. So the way you want to do it on your skin is, and typically we recommend using an oil, and this is one of our oil blends. And the reason we recommend using an oil is because you don't want to tug the skin. Mm -hmm. You want 
up and tool to glide, right? So that's, you know, you don't want to cause sagging and wrinkles through, through, um, through tugging on the skin. So you're, you're going to glide and you generally want to go up and out, except okay. when you come to the neck, you want to go down with a really light pressure. Okay. And so pull the skin tight in the opposite direction that you're going to cup. And we okay. have two sizes. We have a small one for the eye area mm -hmm. and then the larger one for everywhere else. So pull that skin taut after you've applied some oil, squeeze the bulb all the way in, all the way in. And then okay. that's kind of catch the skin. Right. And then okay. hold the light and then glide. All right. And, then and I'm uh, keeping the pressure on the, the balloon. Keep the pressure. And then you kind of want to take everything kind of to this section of the ear and then go down the neck. And the reason you want to do that is because you're promoting two types of circulation. The type of circulation that that is moving blood, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that circulation is supported by the heart as well. So your heart is a pump and it's driving the blood, but you just want to, you want to help drive it even further, right? Okay. Other type of circulation that you're supporting is is the circulation of your your lymph fluid, and the lymph fluid um, has waste and water. So puffiness and toxification is coming from a backup of your of your lymphatic system. The lymphatic system does not have a pump. That fluid is driven only through gravity, and so circulation is really going to help that lymphatic system. And so what you want to do is you want to drive everything to one of those lymph nodes and then down. So you, so it's really very, very simple. And by the way, it feels really good. It does feel good. When I get it right, I keep losing the, the suction. Um, you have to make sure, keep it pressed against the skin because you're losing the suction because you're losing contact with the skin. And yeah. when you lose contact with the skin, and so you eventually get it to where you can do it very quickly. Yeah, there's again, a technique. Yeah, again, an oil helps because when your skin is dry, it all it causes a little too much friction, and it tends to lose contact with the skin. Now, when you when you do the, and then you can of course do your eyebrows. Um, when when you go to the eye area, you want to use the smaller, um, the smaller bulb. And you want to squeeze out a little bit less air because you don't want to tug that okay. skin more delicate too tightly. But sort of, again, kind of move everything over to this part of the skin and then bring it down. You can do the eyebrows. Um, and there's really, I mean, there's just really no wrong way to do it. Bring the blood to the surface, but you're not tugging on the skin as much, again, around that eye area. But don't hold it there for too long because you will get one of those telltale welts okay um, now when you get to the neck area you always want to go down and the reason is because again you're supporting that lymphatic drainage and so what you're kind of doing is you're kind of bringing all that moving all that lymph kind of over to this area of the face and then you're just kind of bringing it down will it work will it will wash away and it's funny I can feel I don't know if you can I can feel a little bit of a nasal drip whenever I'm moving my 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 lips. oh interesting because the fluid is moving so quite good around the sinuses then oh yes I in fact I love doing it right there yeah I'm quite often affected around my sinuses so yeah I need to get that technique sorted out. The reason we love these little manual tools is because they're easy to travel with. They're easy to clean. You don't have to charge them. And there are a lot of electronic tools for your face and they're all amazing. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, that just feels like an ordeal. You know, these, you leave them on your bedside table, you know, you're watching the news, you're doing whatever you're doing. And you know, and it just feels like self-care and it just, it's just, it's relaxing. It just, they're just so easy. Yeah. Yeah. And so good for you. So for viewers who are, you know, look at my stage in life yeah. and um, experiencing dryness, uh, sensitivity, some of the issues that can come up as we go through menopause and that kind of thing. I mean, what are the oils that you're really recommending for older people? skin to best support it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, of course, olive oil is amazing. It's been, um, you know, for centuries has been a, you know, a, a beauty ingredient. And now in more modern times, we have the science behind it. Um, uh, that says, yes, olive oil is good for you. Mm. Rose oil is also a, 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 a tremendous um, essential oil uh, for skin. And then, of course, we know oils like, um, you know, argan oil is 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 really, really great for your skin as well. Um, so, I mean, I, I would say those are my top um, top three favorite. I mean, we do we do have two oil blends. Mm -hmm. Again, we use fermented oils. We have one for sort of normal, um, just almost every skin type with rose oil and jasmine and an oil soluble um, form of vitamin C. And then we have one for more sensitive skin or post-treatment skin if you've just given yourself a, mm -hmm. a deep exfoliating treatment. And um, and that has chamomile and lavender and gargonian extract. And, and again, in both cases, um, those oils contain, uh, th those oils have been fermented. So yeah. we've sort of super, super charged them. Um, but there are so many great, um, oils for skin and, you know, in, I mean, I could, you know, rosemary oil is great for skin and great for hair. Um, but you know, I would say for me, the, the you know, those are my favorites, the ones that, um, that we're currently using. Yeah. And I mean, if they're, if they're taking a look at your range, is there a, is there a starting point there then? Is there, is there a sort of standout that you think would be? A absolutely. So we've built our line around our ABO products. We have an ABO eye serum and we have an ABO face serum and we call them ABO because ABO denoting the three blood types, right? Because okay. we, again, Again, we're, you know, we're the line that really supports circulation and we use um, a class of ingredients that were originally created for wound healing and they're super oxygenating. And in fact, they're so oxygenating. I've never tried this, but the literature says if you were to fall into a vat of this ingredient, you could breathe. That's how oxygenating it is. And so, wow. what, so, so what these ingredients do is again they were originally created for medical and we've used this technology um you know for skincare they were originally created to topically support wound healing there are three phases to wound healing none of them happen in the absence of oxygen mm -hmm. um, so and really what that means when you say oxygen it means supporting circulation mm -hmm. so the i mean these are super powerful um um products they're it's a serum. It's, it's lightweight. It's easy to incorporate into any skincare line. Um, and you know, you're probably, there probably isn't anything else in your, your line that you're using. Um, that's, that's doing the same thing. So that's kind of everything would in our you use that as a moisturizer. I mean, at what point in a skincare routine would you use that kind of product? So cleanse, mm -hmm. um, and then, um, use an essence or a toner. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you would use this and it does have salprene eight in it. So it does okay. hydrate dramatically as well. Um, so, and then, you know, and then there are other things that you would want to use vitamin C. We have a vitamin C product. Um, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about how important stability is with vitamin C. So yeah. we package them like this in individual use ampoules. So it's always fresh and pure. It's never exposed to light or air. The ampoule is biodegradable. Um, so you're not harming the environment by using this extra packaging. It's three forms of vitamin C. It also has vitamin E, which your viewer- They work well together, yeah. It also has biopeptides. Um, so it's just a very, very smart vitamin C formulation, e easy to travel with. Um, but but you would, you know, you would start with this right after um, using your essence or your toner. Um, so so we would say this is a great place to start mm -hmm. um, with, with Circcell. It's our gateway product. Yeah. Um, I am interested in knowing your skincare routine. What do you use day to day, sort of morning and night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I start off in the, the day with our geothermal clay cleanser, which is half geothermal clay, uh, geothermal arctic clay the other half is a cocktail of oils this is full of negatively charged ions those ions will bind to positively charged toxins in your skin pull those toxins out so it's detoxifying and the process of pulling those toxins out also drives circulation so there's sort of a common circulatory mm -hmm. so 
I, I start with this in the morning and then I use our do perfecter, which is our essence pH balancing toner. Also super hydrating. It has lactic acid, which gently exfoliates, but it's also a humectant. So it drives moisture into the skin. It's nourishing mm -hmm. and aloe to soothe the skin. Um, then I use our ABO face serum and eye serum. Um, then I use our vitamin C amp pool. Um, wow. Yes. Um, and then I use um, sunscreen and makeup uh, yeah. for the evening. <laughs> um, the routine is similar, except I use our Mandarin cleansing milk, which is more of a brightening, hydrating cleanser. And it's a really hardworking cleanser. So in the morning, cleansing is more about detoxifying mm -hmm. in the evening about getting the makeup off and the dirt from the day and everything else. Mm -hmm. So this is super hardworking, but, but milky and gentle and smells amazing. It has all sorts of essential oils of citrus fruits. Um, and then I use the ABO serums as well, but instead of the vitamin C, which I only use during the day, I use our Creme R3, which is kind of our, our, our night cream um, that has all sorts of amazing high tech and low tech ingredients and, um, and a soothing, for the skin. And then whenever I feel like I need it, I use our um, uh, Insight okay. Collagen eye masks. Gel patches. So, so there's a dry chamber and a fluid chamber, and we keep them separate because this um, substance is a live 3D matrix of freeze dried collagen. And so if we added the fluid, it would make, it would denature the collagen. So the collagen molecule is a lot like the vitamin C molecule. It's very hard to keep stable. And mm -hmm. if you put it, formulation, it will denature it. So a lot of the collagen formulations on the market that come in a lotion or anything that's wet, the collagen is dead. So it's live. It's in, in a dormant state. You push on this chamber really hard. It releases mm -hmm. the fluid, activates the collagen. Um, and these are really just amazing and so good for um, puffiness and wrinkles and firming. Um, and so I use these about once a week or, you know, before a red car carpet event, or if I had one too many martinis the night before. <laughs> um, so, so th I mean, that's kind of my, my general routine. Yeah. Um, side of the line, I use Retin-A and we haven't. Well, I was going to ask, so that was the very next thing I was going to ask. I noticed the absence of retinoids there and that's, that's interesting that you use Retin-A. So with having done your research, why would you still include that within your routine? Retinoids, retinols are great for skin. You're crazy. If you're a skincare junkie like I am, you're crazy to not use it. The reason we haven't launched anything is because I don't think I can make anything better than Retin-A. Yes. And that's what we tell our clients to use. And there are millions of great um, vitamin A products. But if I can't do it better or do it in some unique, interesting way or bring th something special to it, I just, I don't want to do it. I don't want to just, you know, be like everybody else. And, you know, so yeah. even when you think about oils, like oils, they're low tech, they're easy to, to to do. You know, the only reason I launched oils was because I found this fermentation process that no one else was doing. And so I thought, well, I can deliver an oil product in a way, in a new, fresh, technologically advanced way that isn't being done. So yes, I highly recommend um, retinoids. You use Retin-A daily. I don't use it daily. And I have very okay. tough. I have Mediterranean skin, but mm -hmm. if I use it daily and it's probably because I live in, you know, in these parts of the world where it's dry and we're at high altitude and I'm outside all the time. And um, if I use it every day, it's just a little too much for my skin. So I use it every other day, sometimes every third day. And I, when I do use it, I'll, I'll, I'll put one of our oils on top. I find that yeah. that cuts the redness. I don't, I don't mix them together. I put the Retin-A on first and then I'll put the oil on top. Yeah, it's it's so interesting. I always ask anybody who um, has a skincare brand about retinoids and I will hear very different things depending on who I speak to. You know, some feel that it contributes towards inflammaging, you know, inflammation and sensitivity. Um, but to me, over time, I feel like if you can find a balance. I think that's the thing with retinoids. I use a retinol um, every second day. Um, when I used tretinoin, it was a little too strong for my skin. I think if I'd step back a bit and, and ch change the frequency, I could, probably could have got on top of that. Uh, but I just think it's the messaging around it. I think that people think they have to go full strength every day and that's what can cause the issues. Whereas for some of us, 
we need to take a little foot off the gas and dial it down a little and we can still make it work within our routine. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's, there's as much an art to skincare as there is a science. Everyone's a little bit different. We all have different skin. You just have to try different things to see what works for you. And I agree. It's, it's about balance. Yeah. You don't shouldn't overdo anything. Just like you shouldn't good over advice. exfoliation is good for your skin, but you don't want to over exfoliate. Well, may I really appreciate your time. Your skin looks great. <laughs> so I'm taking notes. You have beautiful skin too. You're glowing. Oh, thank you. I'm probably glowing due to the lighting, to be fair. But <laughs> Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. And it's great to speak with another kind of ingredient junkie who really kind of gets it. Well, I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Maya. I thought she brought a really refreshing take on a more natural approach to anti-aging skincare. And her little cupping device is really quick and easy to use once you get the hang of it. And it's a great option for those who want to boost blood and oxygen supply to the skin to support cell productivity, but who aren't keen on the thought of microneedling or some of those heat and energy based devices. Maya sent me a sample of her extraordinary oil in Jacqueline's blend. It's really lovely stuff. You can smell the jasmine and the essential oils in it, but it, it didn't cause me any irritation. I haven't tried her ABO serums, but they do look so interesting. So if you have tried any Cirque Cell products, do let us know in the comments because it's always so helpful to hear about your different experiences. Are you a fan of natural oils or have you tried facial cupping? Let me know, I do love to hear from you. For now, thanks for watching and listening and I'll see you next time.